Hello, guys. I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I am here with Yanti Lin, and we are following up on the uh, Mark Brooks call to violence against myself on this channel. Uh, John Malin, Gabe El Taib, Ethan Van Skyver, um, basically anybody associated with the group or Comics Gate in general. And uh, let's just refresh everybody's memory. How about that? So other people uh, bothering you, and hopefully you. Mark, was it somebody with yeah. frog in their name? Was it like no. Frogo you? or like Frogman no or something? You? And you believe that was Gabe? like I was lying under a name you? like Frog? Gabe, Shane, John, if you want to come see Boy. me in person, come see me. I'm going to assume if you're standing in front of me that I'm going to take all this weight out game and beat your fucking ass. So other than, other than that, <laughs> stay the fuck away from me. <laughs> Are you going to be in New York Comic Con in three days? No, I'm not going to New York Comic Con. Oh, come on. Why don't you get a ticket? Come see me. You want to fight me at New York City Comic Con? I'll fight you wherever you want. You coward. You want to fight me at New York City Comic Con? Is that what you're saying? Come on, coward. You pussy. You insult my fucking six-year-old autistic daughter. You run from me. I didn't talk about your daughter. I talked about you. So that was literally Mark Brooks, cover artist for Marvel Comics mainly, some DC, actually calling for violence before attending New York Comic Con. Now, New York Comic Con has came and went, and obviously he was allowed in the convention. He was allowed to set up and display his artwork and sell his artwork. And I'm a little shocked by that because New York Comic Con does take security very seriously unmarked officers, uh, stuff like that. You know, they check um, all cosplayers going in, all bags going in and out of the con. They make you uh, tap in your badge and tap out. Now, with Mark, I've heard from industry professionals, but I also, this came up today. I'd heard about this, like, probably, like, I think Monday, that Brooks had been given a talking to by somebody at Marvel. This is understandable, though. This was actually, you could see this a mile away. Of course, somebody at Marvel would talk to him for, one, even engaging with Comicsgate, which he has been for a long time. And we've actually heard that people within the industry didn't like him engaging with Comicscape. And we've, we've addressed this before in videos. In this situation, it wasn't just engaging in Comicscape, but it was actually inciting violence and saying, you must assume if you see these people at a public event that um, you must attack them. He has to assume he has to beat our ass. His words, not mine. So um, this tweet came out. You want to go through it, Yanti? So I was told that Mark Brooks, cover artist for Marvel Comics, got a talking to by Marvel lawyers to stop engaging with Comics Gate, or he will be fired from Marvel. This all came from the way he behaved on that stream with Ethan Van Skyver and Well Red, which is the stream that we just listened to. So to follow up on that, they provided a bit more clarity and said, he will be fired if he keeps engaging with them in the manner he has, i.e. screaming at people's wives and blockchaining everybody and then talking behind their back and keep saying, oh, I'll stop talking about Comics Gate. This is the last time I'm talking about Comics Gate. And the next day, he talks about Comics Gate again. Several creators got a talking to at NYCC 2022 that they cannot be trashing even Comics Gate fans or they will be fired from the companies. There's a shift happening. I like the, how the word fans is in quotations because uh, guess what? Comics Gate is really more of a fan movement than anything else. Some people right. say, yeah, it's about creators. No, it is. It is about creators making books for the fans but it's really about girl fans who are kind of fed up with the way that the mainstream comics has been headed in the past decade or so. And from some of the relations I still have in some of these companies without stating who they are, there is a big concern about the sales dropping off. And uh, the companies are really dialed in that there is a, a retro fan base that does not like what they're doing with the content they're producing with just SJW material, whether it's the new Robin issue or it's just uh, changing the sexuality of characters. They do realize that there is a retroactive fan base that is unsubscribing to their material they're producing. That's why over 50% of DC Comics fell off the top 100 um, sales charts. You're going to say, well, why don't they do anything? Why don't they actually cater to this fandom? They actually yeah, do. They do. They, actually, recently... They DC Comics is really big on that. Remember, they brought back Mark Silvestri, and now they're doing this whole Wildcat Sting reboot. Right. And the Spawn crossover is like, dude, they're trying to cater so hard to the 90s fans. 
Well, more importantly, they're actually doing this in uh, droves over at McFarlane Toys. McFarlane Toys is going through a lot of eras of DC Comics and picking out, cherry picking certain action figures that obviously are not like peg warmers in Walmart and Target. Um, whether they're exclusives, even with Target or two packs or whatever. I mean, they're just they're just going through the archives. And so they do realize that there is a fan. Now, um, with the comics, a, a lot of this is kind of like a cultural shift that's unfortunately taxing pop culture. I mean, I mean, that's the reality behind this. The shift is like maybe talking against comics gate is actually, you know, we need that customer believe it or not, Marvel and DC are kind of starting to eyeball this as like a necessary. Lots of cuts are coming from WB with Zaslav. There was a big cut in the in a lot of TV production in the TV department and the new content there. I don't think DC Comics is immune to this. It's just that they went through so many cuts, it's really hard to cut another limb off of them. That doesn't mean that maybe eventually with what we're seeing with them going into digital just the idea of cutting out monthly comics is a, is an issue. And this type of behavior is a reaction to that. This type of call out to violence to a certain demographic who uh, is doing well. You know, Inglorious Rex raised over $300,000. Um, we're putting that book out tomorrow into the mail and we're getting ready to run volume two. This infuriates Marvel comic artists such as Mark Brooks to the point of calling out people like John Malin Gabe El Taib, Ethan Van Skyver, who who has crazy success with his crowdfunding campaigns, raising millions of dollars. So why why foam at the mouth like this? Because in a weird way, even though they're financially destitute, someone like Mark Brooks actually thinks he's in a position of actually punching down because I'm not being hired by Marvel Comics right now. I'm not being hired by DC Comics. And again, this is kind of the issue where a Marvel representative steps in and says, Nick say on talking that way, we can't do that. Because guess what? There can't be a blacklist, technically. There can't. And taking this position of boasting about that there is a blacklist and F you, your comic skate and stuff like this for the company, it could force them to have to distance themselves between these individuals because if there ever really was proven a blacklist, I mean, there could be litigation. I could sue Marvel or DC Comics. Companies that would hire me like Marvel Comics and right away put my stuff on T-shirts from a cover to T-shirt, the same artwork, all of a sudden it doesn't want to hire me because I associate with Comicsgate. Like, if that was ever really proven, that could be bad for Marvel Comics. Now... This was something that followed this. Um, you want to explain to everybody what this is? It looks like Mark Brooks had this tweet that came out about what happened at NYCC. Talking about, I'm so grateful to the fans I get to meet from all walks of life. This goes double for a melting pot like NYCC. Special shout out to the FBI agent who gifted me a challenge coin. And the two NYPD detectives that came by. I hope they did and their kids enjoy the comics. Now, hang on one second. When he said enjoy the comics, does he mean the comics that he drew or the comics cover that he drew? The comic cover he drew. He doesn't uh. draw comics. That's the biggest lie about Mark Brooks is he's too busy polishing one horrible cover for um somebody for some schmuck to have to draw the 22 pages on the inside. Now, his words, not mine. Mark here, this is an odd thing here. When okay. something like this happens, you want to, like, Mark's got a safe face. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, can I can I say something? See, yeah. I'm under the impression that Mark is a big hardcore leftist. And is the left the ones that came up with the whole defund the police, ACAB slogans kind of stuff? And here sure? he is trying to flex that he knows people in law enforcement. Well, well, he needs to. Okay, there's a reason for that. Mark actually is trying to flex and act like he's surrounded by undercover agents at all times. Um, these wouldn't have been cops in uniforms or agents in uniform at NYCC. They, uh, for the most part, if somebody's walking around the convention center, they're actually, um, th they're not in uniform. That's the whole point is there is officers there on the floor. You just wouldn't know it. Okay, so the question is, is this real? Because these items look like they could be bought off of eBay. Oh, let me just pretty much debunk that. Yeah, you can go on eBay, type FBI challenge coin. And you can find a whole slew of FBI challenge coins. Now, and the fact that he posted about this a few days after the con, 
Seems right. to imply that he had to order it and wait for it to arrive. Then he said, hey, look at all these nice things that came from my copper friends. So, you know, obviously you heard it. If you go back to the beginning of the video, he's inciting violence on people that he just sees in public. Him. But he also wants to throw out this narrative that he's now a victim and he's surrounded by FBI agents and, and New York City police officers. Now, here's a reality. I used to get not coins and stuff like this. I would get PBA cards or something like that by police officers. I knew I, if you go sit at a con and you actually talk to the customers and the people that come up to you, well, I know people in the military. I know people with certain security clearance. I, I know that. I don't go around bragging that I have friends on speed dial that work in law enforcement. I don't feel like I need to do that, but I'm also not going out there threatening violence on a group of people or specific people, including me in this case, on a live stream right days before a convention. I don't know, like, again, I think a lot of this is saving face, but I think a lot of this is Mark Brooks, a little bit afraid that he could come across, uh, check his ass past the cash that his mouth wrote. I do think that. I think he probably spoke in a heated moment, and I think he probably regrets the things he said, especially from what I'm hearing. What this all means, I don't really know. I think this is probably the punchline of the whole thing for a guy that talks really big about hitting people. In the end, he's hiding behind FBI agents and police officers because he needs security even though he challenged people to a fight and, uh, you know, called people chicken, basically, if they wouldn't show up to fight him. No, no, no. It's event. worse than that, dear. He called them all women. Right. Okay, so the other thing, too, is um, everybody just be beware of bait. You know, somebody like Mark, who obviously maybe the whole in the whole situation was bait. I want to throw that out there. What if this was bait that somebody would show up? And he could, um, you know, get you to uh, talk back to him. Oh, and my gosh. He can play victim. And Mark will be like, we stand against bigotry and and blah, blah, blah. You know, here's more for Mark Brooks. The more interesting thing, though, and we've we've talked about this for a couple of months, is how concerned people are about Mark Brooks's behavior. Some at DC and now more Marvel. I would be wary if more industry working professionals start to follow this type of mantra or behavior, because I, I don't know how long this is going to be in fashion if you are a professional that is seeking employment for Marvel or DC, because there have been situations where people have gotten in uh, legal situations or, you know, just unfavorable situations and uh, the companies quickly have to distance themselves. It's not beyond the company to drop a creator like a uh, bad habit. And I'm not so sure how much time Mark Brooks is working with right now. But anyways, enough about that and Glorious Rex. These books, these books that came out beautiful. I want to show you guys real quick. Don't show the booties. <laughs> We're putting the first ones in the mail tomorrow. So, uh, you know, guys, do uh, sign up for Glorious Rex too. Uh, you will be able to get a lenticular card with this campaign that is anatomic that will match your lenticular card of Alex Stone from the first Inglorious Rex. We are looking to launch the 30th of this month. And in the month of Halloween, monsters fighting one another. Why not? I say the artwork in this trailer will be the artwork for the lenticular card. We will catch you guys with another video. Please hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notification, and we'll see you guys again. Let out the peace.